Yesterday was very complicated. I mean, it's still unclear. He spoke about if a person sleeps one location and eats elsewhere, where do you light? Do you light where you eat, where you sleep, or where you eat? So he had said that if a person eats bikfius, eats normally in one location, let's see, you sleep in a, in a dormitory and eat in the dining room. He says, then you should light today because we light, we don't light at Pesach Bayes, we light where we eat. Wherever we eat, that's where we light. That's what he said. But then he spoke about a case which, is, which oh, comes up every single Hanukkah where you're invited for a meal elsewhere. So you can eat elsewhere, but you're going to sleep in your house. So do you light where you're going to eat? Or do you light where actually where you live? Do you light when, before you leave? Or do you light when you come back? See, it said earlier that if somebody is there in your house, then you should have somebody light on your behalf in your house. Or you should light before you leave. Before you leave, you should light and then go eat elsewhere. This is where it's not your normal location where you normally eat, okay? But so we, we had a situation. We asked, so what happens if you have to leave before it's lighting time? You have to leave three in the afternoon to go wherever, wherever you're going. And you're not going to get back to 11 o'clock at night. So the location going, that's not your normal location. You, you, know, you don't need the big fields. As he said, it's only Bakroy. It's only once in a while you're invited there. So when do you light? So there, seemingly, you don't light. You don't light there, correct? Because that's not your location. So where do you light? You light when you get home, right? That, that, and you should light when you get home. That seemingly, from the Mishnah Bura, that would be the right thing to do. No, no. The moment, no, a home, if it's Somach Oshulchanoviv, that's called Kfius. You're part of the family. That, that's the family. Right? We have a talking about a married person. He's financially independent. He's going to his parents' house for a meal. They're invited over to eat a meal at the parents' house. It's not, it's not his home. It's not his home. Even though, it's interesting, even though um, it's not simple. It's not simple. No, no, it's not simple because, no, it comes out because, I mean, it's a little contradictory. Erev Tavshilin. When you have an Erev Tavshilin, whoever the Erev Tavshilin covers, he has to own the the food, right? The person has to own the f food to be a beneficiary of their Erev Tavshilin. So let's say you go into your parents' house for the first days, the second days, whatever, and you have to have Erev Tavshilin. Do you have to have an independent Erev Tavshilin, or the Erev Tavshilin for the, for the family is sufficient? There, because you're part of the family, you don't have to have the families, the, the whoever owns that material, the bread and the cooked item, the baked and the cooked item, being part of family, you're part of that. Although you did not make an acquisition there, but if you have a guest over for Yom Tif, that guest has to make a king in there for Tavshil, because he's not part of the family. No, 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 you could have, no, no, but it's a bit of it, it's a bit of it. Everybody should have their own seat. If, if I participate financially, I have a Kenyan in his Tafshilin, so I have a Kenyan in their Tafshilin. Yeah, even if it's for Hogi Yom Tov. No, then definitely. That's understood. That's simple. That's simple. Or if a child is in his own home and he's only eating a meal at the parents because they live in the same, of course he needs his own Tafshilin. He moves in. The child, married, family moving for Yom Tov. Right now, the, the, it's, a, it's a year that you have to make an Erev Tavshilin. That situation. No, and the, f the parents, the, the father makes an Erev Tavshilin for the family. So normally, whoever participates, so normally the family, even though they're not participating financially in the Erev Tavshilin, they're covered. Because that's called the family. The Erev Tavshilin covers the family. What about if you're a guest? You're not covered because you're not part of the family. So what you have to do is either make your own or you have to make a Kenyan in that baked and cooked item, and when he makes the Erev Tavshilin, you're a partner in that Erev Tavshilin. To do everything the, head of the, the household could do. Everything, everything. So then you know, we're talking about, every, you need the Erev Tavshilin. We're talking about, you, because you'll be doing certain things, right? You're going to be pre preparing from Yom Tiv to Shabbos. Erev Tavshilin allows you to prepare from, you know, not only with him baking and cooking, you want to light something, right? To light a candle, whatever it may be. So you, have, you need your own tef, if tef So if, if you're a part of... Of course you need the food. That's posh. It's understood. Right? Correct, correct. We're talking about you doing the malacha. 
You need the Eftar Shilin to permit you to do Malacha from Yom Tov to Shabbos. So I'm saying, if you're part of the family, you don't need an independent Eftar Shilin. But if you're not, then you have to. So I'm saying, so it's interesting. Children, if you're not Somachal Shulchan Oviv, if you're not supported by, by, you, by your parents, I mean, you consider like part of the household, then you have to light separate Hanukkah lights. So if you're invited for a meal on Hanukkah, then you go home. What do you have to do? You have to light your own uh, light. You're not covered, even though you're eating there. Unless you eat there bikvius. Unless that's you. You always eat every meal. You know, you have an arrangement. You know, a person gets married. First five years, you eat in our home every night. That's the way it is. Okay, fine. Th then you're part of the household. Yeah. Sleeping, then, then it would be okay. No, right, right. Because that's like going to a hotel. Right? You sleep there. You sleep and that's your location. He was speaking that you're sleeping elsewhere and... And that's your permanent location, and you're eating a meal there. Unless you, the kvios, the achilos, the kvios in another location. Well, we li anyway, we light at home first. I mean, we light at home, right? We light before Shabbos, so Friday night's not, not a problem. But let's say uh, you're going from work straight to, the, to where you're going for Shabbos, right? You're going to sleep there. And, and, and you're not going to sleep there. You're going straight. No, 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 no. You're right before Shabbos at the guest. At, at, you're eating a meal. You're going to meet your wife wherever it may be. We're going to be going Friday night, right? But you're sleeping at home. You're going to after you finish the meal, you're walking home. So w w where should you light Hanukkah candles? <coughs> your wife should light at your house before she leaves. That's that's what we're saying. Okay. No, no, never. No, no. And by the time you get home, no, you light when you get home. Yeah, you, well you said, correct. I mean, okay. That's, that's a chubba. You know, that's, that's many of you shall what they do. You don't have to. I mean, not, not everybody. Everybody doesn't light in the box. Some people still light in the window. Right, you live in you live in a, an apartment building. People still like it. And okay, we're holding two ninety two bays. Kodn she yil lechinu tzarich laadlik. You have a child who's reached an age where he's able to light on his own behalf. Rabbinically, he should light his own. Now here we're speaking again. It depends, you know, the different, the different minhogim. Some, 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 I mean, if you're of the opinion you only have to have one set of candles for the family, so we're talking about a child by himself. He has an obligation to light, rabbinic obligation. Because we had earlier, could a child, no, mechaber, could a child be mostly the family, right? We had, yeah, yeah, I understand that one second. Here we have page 288. Take a look, 288. So, Gimel. A woman can light the Ner Hanukkah on behalf of the household. So, there it says a child cannot light. Is not qualified to light. Then he says, So, there it's speaking about. There it's being, but if the child reached the age, that special, that age that he should be trained, then it's pro he could represent, but it's only Yesh Mishomir. There he's lighting on behalf, on behalf of the family. Here we're talking about a child independent of any, anybody. When he's a gil lechinuch, he's what? Tzorech lahadlik. Before we spoke about mutter lahadlik. There, mutter, he can light on behalf of others. He was meant his own personal obligation. Right? Tzorech lahadlik. He must light his own candles when he becomes of age. Okay. What? He could light. The, we're speaking, but we are lighting one candle or one set of candles for the whole family. So there's a, there's a, an opinion that says that he could light for the whole family, although he's a minor. No, 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 no. Cotton, no. cotton. He's a minor. He's a minor. He's a minor shigil lechinuch. He's old enough that he should. Be, he's, he has to be trained how to do the mitzvah. 
So rabbinically, he's supposed to do the mitzvah. Is he sufficiently qualified to cover the family? So it's brought to, as a secondary opinion. But here the Mechabras doesn't bring a question, right? He has to light, because here he's lighting on his own behalf. There he's lighting to cover the family, for the household. That's the difference. No, but everybody agrees. Whether you light in the, let's say you only have one candle. Ashkenaz, you light one candle for the whole house. That's that's the base base halacha. Then then we speak about mahadrin. Mahadrin is per person. That mahadrin min mahadrin per person per night. You have candles representing every night. Okay. Question. Not sure. I mean, I hear both sides. I mean, basically, it's mahadrin. When you light the second candle, yeah, but, but let's understand something. If the cotton is in your house, he's also mahadrin. You understand? Because he's no different than an adult. Whatever you have two adults in one house, you have one candle. So the one candle covers, that's the, covers the whole household, both adults. Because that's that's the that's the base halacha. You're right. The other person lights his own candle. That's that's mahadrin. That's mahadrin. So the the cotton is, is no better than an adult, a second adult. Right, and it'll represent both of you. It'll be represented. Okay. Right. That's mahadrin. Anybody in addition to the first lighting, that's mahadrin. Anything beyond the first lighting. Let's see the Chovos of the Rovos.